Hey guys, welcome to today's video. This is Martin from martinmixing.com and today I want to talk to you about gain staging. What is it? Why should you do it? Why should you not do it? Many of the misconceptions and so on. Let's do it. Okay, so before we jump into logic and I show you some examples of how I gain stage, I want to explain to you what it is and why people do it, why are not doing it, and clear up some of the misconceptions that are surrounding this topic. I think it's actually a very highly debated topic and many, many questions I receive are regarding this one topic and there seems to be a lot of misunderstandings surrounding this one area in the engineering world. So traditionally when you were recording signals in a studio, whether it's microphones or synthesizers, electronic instruments, whatever it is, you had to set the level of your preamps to reach a certain level where all of the succeeding analog equipment or even digital equipment was most comfortable working with. And this was plus 4 dBU, which is equal to 1.228 or short 1.23 volts. Okay, so these levels, dBU, U being for voltage, actually correlate to real physical physical and absolute levels which can be measured. It's not just an abstract relative measure. It's actually very much set in stone to how, what that correlates to in the real physical world, okay? So if you are doing a good job, by the end of your recording you would have sausages in your DAW or on your tape that looked relatively even, relatively equal in terms of its loudness. And this, these levels were then really comfortable to work with on your analog equipment. You could be quite certain that nothing would really clip. You could use your volume faders in the most comfortable range and everything would be okay. So for me, this is what I understand under gain staging is that it is, I think, something to be done at the recording stage so that your recorded sources are of a right level to be worked with later on in mixing and then later on in mastering. Now when we talk about gain staging in mixing, here things become a bit more blurry. Uh, you can watch Andrew Sheps, Michael Brower, C uh, Chris Lord Algie and many other engineers talk about it very differently. Andrew Sheps in particular I heard in an interview saying that he does not gain stage and he does not understand the fascination with this topic because what he simply does he loads the tracks into his session, he starts mixing, and if something is too hot, he will turn it down. If something is too quiet, he will turn it up. When it comes to mixing, personally, I have the same approach. I do not gain stage. Most of the things that I mix are sent to me with the levels already in pretty good shape. Now, that doesn't mean that I don't have to every now and then change the signal strength of something that is sent to me. Let's say I have a high head that is too quiet and I notice that, okay, I have to push my volume fader above uh, like plus 6 dB or if I can't push my volume fader enough then I'll just use a gain plugin before or I use the virtual mix rack with any kind of instance inside it that has a gain knob function and I'll use that to boost the signal of that. Every now and then it also happens that the signal is too hot and then I'll just pull it back a little bit. So I want to show you a little bit of how I approach mixes and for this let's jump right into logic. As you can see I have quite a big session here in front of me. This is already mixed and my goal is, and I don't want to play you anything, I just want to have a look at where my faders are. So as you can see my faders are all except for, I think, was it the piano here in the negative range, okay? This is quite important because if you're in the positive range, okay, so above zero, then you are adding an extra gain stage, which I am against, especially when it's a digital gain stage. Um, on consoles, this problem is even more severe because there, if you push the fader beyond zero, you're actually activating yet another circuit that can degrade your audio, okay? You're essentially putting another amplifier into the signal path, which should be avoided, in my opinion. What I do is, when I start to mix, I dump all of my tracks into the session, and what I do right away is I select everything and pull everything down to minus 10, okay? So all of my faders before I start mixing will be at minus 10, and then I start mixing from that level and I'll set my levels from there. This usually means that once everything is done, I have a somewhat decent level in my master bus, okay? But, because what happens is that you end up boosting a lot of frequencies, okay? There's always some boosts going on. You're boosting a lot on the kick. Let's see, oh, I'm boosting 15, 13 dB of treble on the kick. I'm boosting probably, 
yeah, quite a bit on the treble as well on the guitars. Let's see what I'm doing here on the bass. There's a lot going on as you can see, but even here I'm boosting a little bit of mid-range, quite a bit of mid-range to, you know, get that bass cut through. So these levels will also build up. And of course, if you know a little bit about what's going on, if you add one plus one here in the digital realm or even on your console, you will not get plus two, my friends, you will get plus seven because adding equal strength signals in your digital and analog domain will give you six decibels of boost and you can try that out for yourself as well. And what that means is that once I have combined all of these tracks, it is inevitable that my master bus will still get too hot. And this is a problem that I hear a lot in the music that I review, or the mixes that I review, is that things are usually too hot and people struggle on their master buses and they think when they put a limiter on it and that's just crushing the mix, then everything is okay, no. So here is something that I do, and this will shock many of you, I think. Have a look at this. I had to attenuate the level of my mix by 15 dB once it reached the master bus. This is quite crazy. So even though this was a really well recorded session, okay, everything was leveled quite well, maybe a little bit on the hot side. Once everything was mixed and boosted and EQ'd, the mix still clipped my master bus by quite a significant level. So therefore I had to lower the gain, the level on my master bus by 15 dB. And I like to do this on the very first instance on the inserts so that all the succeeding plugins, okay, my EQ and my other EQ and yet more EQ, but even my master bus compressor and everything else, especially the tape, behave in a normal way without clipping anything. And so that I still have some headroom to later on add some EQ and some limiting to get a louder and more polished mix, okay? So as you can see, I do gain stage, but I also don't gain stage. So it's not a particular part of my workflow where I sit down and I set the gain of every sim single track. Personally, I think that's a waste of time. I think that's nonsensical and unless you have a really complicated mixing system like Michael Brower does where he uses a set of buses, actually quite a few sets of buses to achieve his really signature sound called Browerizing, highly encourage you to read that up, then you don't really have to gain stage at all I would say. I encourage you to dump your tracks into your session pull your faders down to minus 10 and from there it should be quite smooth sailing. This is my conclusion of this. I will be talking about all of this in my book as well, which I'm writing right now and the working title is Rough Mixing. I think that sounds pretty cool. I'll explain in detail everything about levels, everything about the mixing mindset, everything about analog versus digital. There's going to be a lot of stuff. I think it's going to be really, really cool. And this is it for today's video. Hope this was helpful and hope this clears up some things for you. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions. If you're watching this on YouTube, please like and subscribe. I really appreciate that. If you're watching this in my Facebook group, good to have you. And I'll be seeing you in the next video. Until then, happy mixing. Take it easy. Bye bye.